we are the last national appliance repair company out there. It, it's a very underrated industry. It's not getting replaced by AI, by Walmart, by Amazon. You know, again, that word unique. We kind of have our right. own niche and we've grown it into national and, and also into Canada. I mean, we have great opportunity in Canada. I, I love my team. I love my owners. And it's a great family to be a part of with Mr. Appliance and Neighborly. Hello, everyone, and thanks for tuning in to the latest edition of Fran Coach's Franchising 101 podcast. I am Tim Parmeter, founder and CEO of Fran Coach, and your podcast host. Today, we're going to welcome in one of our franchise partners uh, onto the show to discuss their brand. Uh, today's franchise is a rare home service model that falls into the repair category, which means it is an always needed service that's never, ever going to go away. But unlike most repair brands, it does not have that emergency component to their model, which causes the phone to ring at two in the morning. Intriguing, right? First, who are we? Brand Coach is a national search firm dedicated to working with individuals like yourself interested in owning a franchise. We're partnered with over 600 franchises spanning about 70 different industries. Our number one goal with clients is to help properly educate them on all aspects of franchise ownership to determine if this is the path for them. And then if so, help them determine what is their absolute best franchise down. And it could be today's guest. All right, so that is a bit about us. Now let's get to the good stuff, which is our guest and joining us today from lovely Waco, Texas, said no one ever about Waco, Texas, uh, the uh, director of franchise development for our featured brand today, which is Mr. Appliance, uh, Bobby Strumloff. Bobby, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Tim. Gra glad to be here. And I guess I've never heard beautiful Waco, Texas either. So, but we're here. It's hot. It'll be 103 today and we're ready to roll. Uh, yeah, I think we've got about the same thing here in Arizona, but you know what they say in Arizona, Bobby, it is a dry heat. So, um, yes. which is, uh, the lie we tell ourselves when we live in Arizona. So no, no, 114. It's not bad, Bobby. It's a dry heat. You'll totally be fine. So, um, you'll, you'll die without sweating is basically what that is versus Texas. You're going to sweat while you die of heat exhaustion. Yeah, so. absolutely. We'll, we, we sweat a little bit here in Texas. It gets hot and, and it gets humid. So, but none of that uh, crazy white stuff that falls from uh, from from the sky that uh, those you know our sucker friends in the north have, and I grew up with, and I know you did for part of your life too up in the northeast. So, um, well, cool, man. We got a bunch to talk about, Mister Appliance. I'm so confused what Mister Appliance might do as a business model, but we'll get to that in a second. But I always like the people side of this. Tell us a little bit about like. Kind of, kind of Bobby, but really, I was like hearing the journey into the world of franchising. Uh, so let's 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 give us a scoop, man. What's the Bobby story? Yeah, I appreciate it, Tim. So, born and raised in New York City, so I'm I'm a Northeasterner, city boy by by choice, and uh, I'll stick to that forever. Lived in a few places between here and there. Being in Waco, I went to college in Missouri. Lived in Florida for a time, and I was a teacher for 20 years. I uh, taught U.S. history, taught AP human geography, coached baseball, coached a little basketball. And uh, right before the pandemic, one of my good friends, Gary Sipes, Gary's with, with us here at Mr. Appliance over Five Star Painting and uh, a couple other brands. And his wife worked with me at the school and we had a good group of friends we were hanging out with. And, you know, we were talking about teaching one night and and I kind of just vented some frustration to Gary. And he's like, hey, you should come sell franchises. And I looked at him and I said, please don't take this the wrong way, Gary. I'm not a salesman. And he looked at me and he starts laughing. I said, what? He goes, you are the perfect salesman. I said, what are you talking about? He goes, you sell U.S. history and AP human geography seven hours a day to teenagers. <laughs> that is the best kind of salesman. <laughs> and I just laughed and I, and I never thought of it that way. And that made me think. And the Christmas right before the pandemic, I said, you know what? And I said, well, I have nothing to lose. You know, I like my teaching job, but I was getting kind of frustrated with it. So I said, you know what? Let's see what we can do, Gary. Let's see if we can make some things happen. Had a couple interviews at Neighborly. Uh, I got to spend a day at the office here in Waco. Really enjoyed it. And especially after, you know, the way the pandemic was treating education, things like that, I was like, this is a good time to exit. And I was lucky enough. I got offered a job and I've been with, with Neighborly since and started with Mr. Electric for a year. And now uh, here with Mr. Appliance for three. And it's awesome. I absolutely love it. And and I and I love the randomness of the story. And and we were we were talking before we, we came on air about uh you and I went to college uh unbeknownst to each other like 
an hour from one another in in rural Missouri, both both athletes. I was a history major and was going to be a, well, my whole thing. I want to go back to high school and teach and coach and end up doing that on college level for a while. But that education brain, I think, works really well in in our industry because, as as you know, kind of the whole point of our show is properly educating people on franchise ownership because people don't know nothing about nothing when it comes to franchise ownership. So super, super cool. And, and, and as we'll, I'm quite sure come up as we talk more about Mr. Appliance is there's always a little bit of that perception of, Oh, I don't have any experience. Like, uh, like I can't spell appliance, let alone how am I going to be able to repair one well, we don't need that, right? Um, but but before we get into all those things with the owner, just like let's go back to kind of the consumer side with Mr. Appliance. And in franchising, even though we're both like got kind of similar backgrounds, we ain't too bright in franchising. So usually the name of the franchise is pretty obvious as to what it does. But give us a kind of the scope of consumer focused. What all does Mr. Appliance do? And, and kind of talk about kind of who those customers are. Sure. It, it's pretty self-explanatory. Like you said, uh, you know, we, we fix all the all appliances. Our bread and butter is really going to be inside the home. Uh, every home has six to eight appliances from washer, dryer, refrigerator, stove. I mean, we do countertop ice makers. I mean, we've had owners that fix the big KitchenAid mixers. You name it, we have the ability to fix it. And then we really kind of take a look at the things that are around your community. You know, as people are driving around where they live, think about hair salons, gyms, fire stations, schools, all these places have appliances. So they're all great revenue streams that, you know, you really don't think about. And then you can get into the next part of it, which is the commercial stuff, your restaurants, or your big walk-in coolers, you know, stoves like that. So there's there's revenue to be had all over the community where, you know, everyone lives. And again, it's one of those things that we probably take for granted a little bit. And you just mentioned like the desktop or like countertop ice machine. So it's a little joke in my family. Um, I have a bougie like countertop ice maker does the little pellets or as nuggets, I call them like the, the rabbit nuggets. poop, the rabbit poop. Right. Yeah. Um, and um, I'm on my second one or on my third one. Now the first one cut out and I just did what I do. I just went and bought the new one again. And it's, as you said that like literally never even dawned on me. I'm like, Oh, Holy hell. I could have called Mr. Appliance and probably for a fraction of what it cost me to get the new one, you guys could have come out and actually fixed that and kept kept it running perfectly. Yeah, we do all of those things. And it's funny, you know, you mentioned that. And we have so many franchise owners that become franchise owners because they had a service in their home or didn't have a good service or couldn't find someone in their community. You know, yeah. some of these appliance repair places, in, you know, in local communities, it, it's tough for them to come to see you because they're overworked. You know, with six to eight appliances in every home, uh, you know, unfortunately, the appliances aren't built like they used to be. Being old like we are, of course, you know, back in our day, uh, you know, they're not built to last. Right. So there's always an opportunity and there's just so much, you know, opportunity to get in there and fix an appliance. Well, you think there's you know, like, oh, well, there's a warranty, but that warranty is probably. And again, I literally just went this with with the with my ice maker. It was there's a one one year warranty and I the it broke down at 11 months. Right. Like had that been just a little bit longer, like now I'm screwed. My choice would have been to basically just shell out a brand new one if I wasn't able to find somebody like Mr. Appliance to come in and take care of that. Yeah, so. you know, and, and we do. You mentioned warranty. I know we'll get into all the ins and outs here, Mister Appliance. But you know, we're a lot of times we're the service provider of choice with all the major warranty companies because oh, people cool. know who we are. You know, they know our name, they know our parent company, Neighborly, and we become the provider of choice because we have great connections. People know who we are. These warranty companies that are familiar with us, they understand the corporate structure that supports us, so they want us to be out there. So if your ice maker was under a warranty with places like American Home Shield or even just within the brand. You know, we get the call out of those times to really maximize that revenue coming in. Awesome. So tell us a little bit about, so the, an owner looking at this, right? I, again, I think we touched on this earlier, but there's, there's sometimes a myth that the owner is the doer or needs all this experience doing that. Um, is that the case, right? Number one. And then if, if, if not talk a little bit about some of the things an owner does kind of that day in a life. Yeah, absolutely. 85% of our franchise owners never touch a tool. They don't come from the, the industry. They're business owners. 
You know, we look for people that can grow and lead a team, that can follow a marketing plan, that can be out in the community, be the face of the franchise. We have a very unique position here at Neighborly and with Mr. Appliance. We're really a, a small mom and pop business. We're a local business. We are in the community. Uh, people like doing business with us because of that. And yet we still have a corporate support of Neighborly that's been valued over $4 billion. So you get the best of both worlds at that point. You know, you be, you're able to you know, work in the community, you're hiring people from your community, you're servicing your community. And I think at the end of the day, we all like to do business with people that we know, we like, and we trust. So it makes it real easy for us to, you know, to become that service provider in the community. And I'm guessing it's not a, I mean, there's, there's, there's sales and everything like, like you had mentioned, you didn't realize, you know, teaching, teaching high school history, you're actually doing sales in, in a, in a sense. Uh, but this isn't a high pressure sales thing. This is from a the repair side of things. It's more of just being that trusted provider and being there. So an owner that maybe doesn't, you know, like they're not great at cold calling. They're not great at high pressure sales. Well, this isn't that. It could be a p fantastic opportunity for them, correct? It is. You know, as a, as a franchise owner, you know, being out in the community, if you can talk to people, you can go to events. You know, a lot of our franchise owners are members of the Chamber of Commerce. They're on local school boards. You know, people see that and, and that becomes a reliable name, a trusted name. You know, teachers, firefighters, police officers, those are kind of like the staples of the community. Right. So right. when you're involved with those groups, people must, you know, they assume that, hey, this is a good business. You know, these are good people. They want to be a part of that. So you're in the community and doing those things, which is, you know, there's no getting on the phone and just dialing people up to go fix their appliances. You know, <laughs> they, they, you're going to get the phone right. calls coming in, you know, right. and, it, and it makes it makes it easy to do this. Yeah. You're not walking up and down the the, the streets of the subdivision, knocking on a door. Hey, I uh, got any broken appliances that we can fix. Just <laughs> I, I don't think that's going to be one of our marketing strategies, Tim. I think that if you did, you'd probably find a lot of people that would that would answer, though. Right. Tiny bit more nuanced than that. Right. So, um, so we've got an owner, not the doer, right. Um, connector, building those relationships, kind of that person, you know, and like, you know, you and I both right now, we got a little, if, if you can see it or not, but like our, our logoed gear, right. Um, you're, you're, you're logoed up in the community, right. Kind of being that, that pride of owner, right. Pr pr having that pride of ownership out there. Um, but we do need people that are out going to do the work, right? So talk a little bit about how the owner is going to find that person, but also touch on the ways, and I know there's many with Neighborly, where you're going to have Mr. Appliance and Neighborly, that you're going to have that help as an owner in finding those technicians doing the work. Hey everyone, I wanted to take a quick break from our podcast to tell you about our amazing friends at Entrepreneur. If you're looking to become a franchisee or simply learn more about business ownership, and guys, let's be honest, you're listening to the Franchising 101 podcast, so we know you have some interest in this. And I really encourage you to go to entrepreneur.com to check out all of their great content and resources. Seriously, Entrepreneur has everything, all the way from a bookstore to the best podcast webinars and videos, plus information on upcoming events and the latest articles that seriously, they cover all aspects of franchising and business ownership. If you're having trouble deciding which franchise is right for you, start with Entrepreneur's renowned Franchise 500 ranking, which highlights the best franchises of 2022. For 45 years and counting now, Entrepreneur has been and continues to be the most widely recognized and respected authority in the franchise market. Digital and print subscriptions are available, so you never miss out on anything. So seriously, what are you waiting for? Go to entrepreneur.com right now and learn more. Yeah, absolutely. The first thing we have is through Neighborly is a system called Paradox. It's based on artificial intelligence. So when Joe Smith is applying to work at your Mr. Appliance, he's actually going through an interview with artificial intelligence. So we are a step ahead of the game right there. You know, the owner then gets a report that talks about all the things that were discussed in the AI. And then you can set up interviews, things like that. Uh, that's just from the corporate support. I mean, within the franchise network, you know, 300 plus franchise owners that are all willing to help out because every good owner that we bring on raises the name and the value for Mr. Appliance. So we have you have support from corporate, you have support from other franchise owners. Then within the community, you know, a lot of times it's just boots on the ground. You know, it's going out and, and finding people, uh, places that you wouldn't expect maybe. You know, maybe they're not 
really appliance repair technicians, but they're HVAC, they're auto mechanic, you know, and you can even go as far as finding people that have great customer service. We have an owner in Las Vegas that every time he goes out, he's talking to people about becoming appliance repair technicians because their customer service is so great. We're in the people business, Tim. Yeah. That's what we do. You know, we're, we're helping people. You know, we just happen to fix appliances, but we're in the people business. So finding great people is something that we'll assist with and continue to help grow your business. How hard is it to, I guess, kind of get trained as an appliance repair technician? So several things. Again, our network of franchise owners, you can go and shadow. That's a great thing. If you if you as an owner wanted to learn how to fix things and be on the, you know, the appliances, you can go spend time with other owners. Uh, if you hire somebody that's maybe not as proficient as possible, we offer a course called Master Samurai, which is video modules that our first franchise owners created. And also we have great relationships with uh, appliance repair schools. We have SSG in Atlanta and we have the Dyer Academy here in Texas, up in Dallas. So we have schools that you could send, you know, a technician there to really get hands-on training. So there's always opportunities to learn and to grow. So it's, it sounds much more simplistic to learn than say, if I want to be, you know, an electrician or a plumber where there's, I mean, there's, there's a there's a pretty good chunk of time to be able to learn how to do those things um, to really kind of have that licensing. This is on the repair side, but a little bit more simplistic, it sounds like, correct? It is. It's not going to be as detailed, as intricate. There's no like apprentice period where a lot of states you have to be an apprentice for so many months and you have to, you know, uh, fulfill all kinds of checklists and things like that where appliance repair repair. You know, it's not like that. So, you know, we do have the advantage that where you find someone's a little bit mechanical, they can really just get into those machines and make some things happen. Nice. So we've kind of thrown out the, the the name Neighborly a couple of times. So let's come back um, to that. And I know we've had a, a few different folks from Neighborly on over the years. So we've got Mr. Appliance. Mr. Appliance is the franchise, uh, several hundred owners around the country. And still, just make sure this is clear, plenty of availability around the country as well, right? But it's not just Mr. Appliance. We're part of Neighborly brand. So talk a little bit about neighborly kind of help and you mentioned the dollar amount but how big and massive neighborly is from a support perspective yeah neighborly i mean when, I, when you think about franchise or at least when i did i thought about mcdonald's taco bell pizza hut like you think about those singular corporations and they're all over the place with with neighborly you know we have 19 brands here in the united states and canada to where we have 5500 franchise owners throughout the united states and canada to where there's so many opportunities for learning. You know, again, being a teacher, the education is always coming first for me. But opportunities to cross brand, to cross market. You know, you get into different cities where there's six, seven, eight, nine, ten of the brands. Now you can partner up, you can work, you can share in some of the marketing costs, some of the skill. I mean, you know, one of the other things that's great about it is that a new franchise owner comes into an area, let's just say, for instance, Kansas City. All of the owners of the other brands in Kansas City automatically generate an email that goes out to all their past customers that says, hey, listen, we got a new neighbor in town. Uh, Joe Smith has opened up Mr. Appliance, another great neighborly brand. Give them a call for your appliance repair needs. So it's instant customers, you know, as soon as you get that up and running. So yeah. I mean, I don't think you can do many things that has that customer base. Yeah, exactly. Right. The Hey, you've trusted us for this. Now we're here for for that. And then I think you talk about getting out and connecting in the community and and some people, you know, that sounds okay, but they've not done it much or at all. How do I do that? Well, you're going to have the training from the franchise, but if you have, you know, six, eight, 10 other neighborly owners, um, like those are your new besties, right? And, and because at, at the beginning, you may not have much to offer them, but you're going to, right? And to be able to refer back and forth or just to say, hey, come on, we're in this chamber or we're in this BNI, whatever it is, or, you know, hey, we've got some realtors over here that refer us a lot of business, creating those introductions. That's a huge kickstart to to getting that business going. Yeah, it is. I mean, I, I, again, I don't know of any other industry that has what we have, and I'm, I'm still new to franchising four years, but, you know, when you see the availability of other franchises that are under the same umbrella to share the same customer, and that's what's great about it. You know, all of our brands are all very different to where all the services in the home can be done by neighborly for the most part. And right. us as the appliance repair, you know, if, if Mr. Ruder goes in and does a great job with the plumbing, they slap a magnet on the refrigerator that's got our name on it, Mr. Ruder's on everyone's name on it. And yeah. now those people remember, they remember that service. Hey, we had Mr. Ruder, they're awesome. Now my refrigerator's out, I'm going to call Mr. Appliance. Why wouldn't I? It's under the same umbrella. You know, it's right. great. 
Right. Because as a homeowner trying to find that trusted person, right, it's always the fear of uh, who's co who's coming into my house, right? It's like, okay, well, here comes Billy Bob and his beat up pickup truck versus <laughs> here comes Mr. Appliance in the nice new wrap vehicle. They're uniformed. It's professional. There's all of the, like the customer service features that are there, right? So the other thing I think is always interesting about neighborly and as a huge value to the owners is the buying power. Um, and so I know there's certain things that are a little bit different across, across the different brands, but talk a little bit about some of the things from a buying power that neighborly has that really is going to help those Mr. Appliance owners. Yeah. Well, that's one of the things I always touch on speaking with my candidates. We have our own vendor network. It's called pro trade net 250 plus vendors. You know, you're not required to spend your money at those, at those places, but we have everything from auto dealerships to insurance companies, to cell phone providers, and at the bare minimum, you can go and use that to leverage business in your own community. You know, you've got a local Ford dealership, but, you know, on Pro Trade Net, we can get your, your car for X amount of dollars. You walk into that dealership and say, hey, listen, you know, I like to keep my business here. I'm, I'm a local, you know, but can you beat this price? You know, I think that alone is just is the value of that is terrific. You will have a Pro Trade Net specialist that will be there along the way, show you how to maximize dollars and put money back into your pocket, put it back into your business, you know, whatever it may be. And Again, another unique thing about us is being able to have our own vendor network. Yeah, it's the, and, I, and I've heard this from from other folks within Neighborly, right? Like you can actually get the vehicle sometimes less than that dealership right across town because you're buying so many more of them or, um, and I forget exactly how all of this works, but there's even possible you, you've spent enough money with a certain vendor you're getting a huge discount on everything, but then that at the end of the at the end of the year, that vendor's like giving you a rebate on top of that, right? It's just the 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 buying power piece. I think is just so overwhelming with neighborly that it's hard to even kind of like fully grasp how many ways that's going to help you get the things you need, the quality things you need for less of a price, which is again then the, kind of helping build that margin within your business. It's unbelievable. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's again, it's a very unique opportunity, uh, you know, and, and our franchise owners are getting rebates, you know, at the end of the year, which they turn into taking care of their employees. You know, maybe you have a Christmas party and you give Christmas bonuses and that's not even coming out of your pocket because now you spend X amount of dollars. You bought vehicles that come wrapped and drop shipped and, you know, you're, or, you know, you're buying parts for all your different appliance repair needs. You know, then you get a check at the end of the year and you say, you know what, I'm going to I'm going to take care of my employees because they've done such a great job that yeah. comes out of someone else's kitty. It doesn't come out of your pocket. So it's great. Yep, exactly. Yeah. And and again, like when you think of the quote competition, right, Billy, Billy Bob's not getting that right. Um, you know, may, may, maybe he's got a, you know, oh, I got five percent off at Home Depot. Good job, yeah. Billy Bob. Right, so <laughs> it's totally different. Yeah. And, and, he, and the other thing he does, Tim, is he passes it on to his customers. If he's not getting discounts, he's going to raise his prices because he's right. got to make his money too. You know that allows us to keep some of our prices under control because we have that ability where we're not paying market value for parts for vehicles for things like that. So yeah. again, that all trickles down. What talk about like the startup, right? So we've got an owner. Um, we know the owner really shouldn't be the one out doing doing the repair. So what do we need to kind of start with? Do we need some big fancy office? Do we need like 10, 15 people? What's what's all that look like to begin with? Yeah, we try to keep it as simple as possible to get going. Uh, you know, the candidates and I spend time, we create a territory that is protected. We only put one Mr. Appliance owner in that area. We don't want to compete with each other. And if we can, we can try to set up an office out of, you know, the owner's home, you know, that's going to save on some on some costs right there, especially in some of our bigger cities where real estate is what it is at this time. You know, it's just really expensive. Uh, then a lot of times our franchise owners will grow into an office, something small. Uh, what we'll need, we'll, you know, you get a vehicle, we'll start with one technician, one vehicle. And our goal is to get the three techs in the first year. You know, that, that's where we start to see some changes in the business. There'll be some marketing costs. You know, obviously you want to get your name out there, whether it's Google ads, whether you're buying door hangers, magnets, things like that. Uh, but, you know, again, we try to keep the cost to a minimum. You know, the biggest expense will be the territory, you know, paying for that area that is protected. But once you get going, you know, the cost will be really relative up to what you'd like to spend as a business owner when it comes to parts, when it comes to your advertising. You know, we have different owners that do it all different ways. There's not one way to skin a cat. And uh, we'll help and guide throughout the, the process with that. Yeah, and again, it, 
I think that coaching along the way, right, that you're going to have if you're if if there's you're saying, hey, well, you want our goal is to get to three technicians by the end of the year. Somebody might be sitting there going, well, how the hell do I know when I add the second one and with the third one, right? All of that's really well laid out. Again, as part of why you do a franchise that that plan is there, kind of that coaching and guideline is there. Um, do you have any owners or is this possible for somebody that's like, okay, three techs in a territory sounds sounds good. What if I want two territories and six techs? Uh, what if I want to maybe really kind of grow, you know, I, I can spread out, but I can also grow on top of each other and maybe look at multiple neighborly brands. Uh, are those are those options for people that want to grow bigger? Yeah, the opportunity for scalability is tremendous with, with neighborly and with Mr. Appliance. I mean, we can scale it to where we add more zip codes. We do all of our territories by, by building zip codes and making a nice congruent territory. We can always add zip codes at any time. You know, I get with franchise owners, you know, weekly and they're, hey, I want to add zip codes, want to add this. So you can grow the business that way to add population to grow it that way. But also I have franchise owners that, you know, they own different brands. I have a couple in Kansas City, outside of Kansas City, John and Allison Brewflat. They were Mr. Handyman owners. Now they're Mr. Appliance owners also. So we see that opportunity. And I'm learning the more I've been with, with Neighborly here, our newer candidates are looking to come in to do more than one brand. They see the opportunity. They understand what Neighborly provides. And they're like, look, I want to start with Mr. Appliance. And then here in a year, I want to do five-star painting. And you know, you can just continue to grow without having to move, add space. You can just keep adding brands and keep servicing that same customer base. Yeah. And when you think of, I think most people, when they think about a franchise is they understand I can grow and have multiple of them, right? Whether it's, you know, I got, you know, five different subway locations or I've got five different territories of a franchise. And that is, that is common, right? But I think the piece that people miss is why would I spread out when, again, you could almost be like a mini neighborly, right? You say, Hey, you're starting out as Mr. Appliance. And neighborly is going to market to all of those other owners in your territory. Why not be the other owners, yeah. right? Not just you've trusted neighborly, you've trusted me to do this. Now we're here for this. And all with neighborly brands all being essentially home service, again, it is really, it's it's kind of like how many different things can I own in that home and that homeowner, right? So it's an amazing opportunity for people. It is, you know, that, that the growth, I think, is the idea and the growth of adding different brands, things like that has allowed neighborly to grow. You know, people have come in and saying, wow, I didn't realize I could do this. There's so many times when I speak to people that are current franchise owners, they say, well, I didn't, I didn't realize I could do it this way and I can add another brand. And now that customer, I get to see them in two different modes where I'm, whether I'm painting their bedroom or now I'm fixing their refrigerator or whatever it may be, you know, with the 19 brands, we pretty much, I don't think there's very few things that we don't do in the home I and mean, we cover everything. <laughs> we don't do pools. We don't do roofing. I think outside of that, I think we've got it all covered. Yeah. And, and you might add the word yet uh, for yeah. that. Uh, no, yeah, right. Very true. <laughs> <laughs> knowing, knowing neighborly. So, I want to come back to the owner for a second. And so, and I, I know there's a lot of them, so there's going to be some variance with this, but is there anything in particular you find that's kind of common for an owner or anything in particular that you really look for in a, in a person that you're like, Hey, this, this might be our person to be a great Mr. Appliance owner. Yeah, we do. You know, like I said, we look for people that can grow and lead a team, you know, just those basic things, but Give you an example of, of a current franchise owner, uh, a gentleman by the name of John Lucky. John's out in Tucson, Arizona, uh, out by you there. Uh, and John was in the biotech industry for a while, you know, 20 plus years. And he just felt like he ran its course. Like he really wasn't motivated to go to work. It was that grind that we all know about. And, you know, the, the pandemic came around. His wife, Jenna, started messing around in the kitchen, baking bread, doing stuff. And started having a local following where she was selling bread and sourdough, like sourdoughs her jam and pretzels and whatnot. And um, he comes from an entrepreneurial background. His family was all entrepreneurs. And he found us and we, we met and we got to chat. And he loved the idea of being in the community. He loved the idea of being able to service his community. He loved the idea of being able to work together with his wife. You know, all these things opened up a door. And the further we got in our process, I watched John get more and more excited. You know, the first, you know, you're asking questions, getting to know each yeah. other. But as he got, the closer he got to becoming a franchise owner, like you can just see every time we talked, his eyes would light up and you could see the excitement and feel it. And when he was awarded a franchise, you know, he he couldn't have been happier. We, we did a video call, an award call. 
him and Jenna were high fiving. I mean, it was like I was like, yes, they're gonna kill it. They're gonna do great. And you know, they're open already. They're doing awesome. And it's just, you know, we see this all over the country. We see people yeah. that they they're stuck. What do I do? And they don't think the franchising. And right. when they find us, we find each other. The, the magic is there to happen. And we have stories like that all over neighborly. Yeah, super cool. They the one thing I want to come back to on Mr. Appliance too is. And frankly, if I'm being really honest, I stole this from Neighborly years ago is with all of the home service brands, you guys kind of put it into three categories, enhance, maintain, repair, right? So Mr. Appliance is the repair brand, but I think it's also unique from a standpoint of there's not a lot of 2 a.m. calls for, oh man, my washing machine isn't working, right? If I got a flood in my house, I'm calling you. I don't care what, what time it is and I need you here now right? Um, this is important. There's an urgency to it, but we're not, it, it's, I think it's maybe really one of the few things that's in that repair space. It's needed. It's never going to go away, but it's not urgent. The phone's not ringing at two in the morning or like, or am I totally wrong on that? No, you're absolutely right. We, we really don't do any emergency service. We may get a call here and there, uh, you know, a refrigerator, you know, some people working maybe a third shift. That's when they come home and they find these things. Uh, you know, but we have a call center that can take care of the calls and the off hours. So you're not bothering your technicians. You know, you're not waking up to the phone ringing at three in the morning because, you know, Joe Smith has no, you know, refrigerator action. So, you know, again, it, it's very unique. You know, we try to set things up on a Monday through Friday basis, eight to five, uh, you know, and we open up on Saturdays too. We have owners that say, yeah, we're going to open in the best part. They don't have to be anywhere. They don't yeah. have to do anything. They could be in bed at eight in the morning, nine in the morning. And their technicians are out running the business, you know. So it's not like you have to open up a store, be it a warehouse or any of that kind of stuff. You yeah. can run it from your home, and your technicians are out there. And it just, it again, it, I keep using the word unique because I, I don't know of anything else that's like it in franchising. You know, appliance repair is unique to itself, and you're not having to give up your quality of life. You may get a better quality of life leaving yeah. the job that you're in, or you know, starting a franchise with us. Yeah. Well, you are going to give up your quality of life. You're going to give up the bad quality of life yeah. of being an employee. <laughs> right. Yeah, the lack of. <laughs> to, 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 to control it. Um, super cool. I, I'm going to throw one last thing at you. And again, I appreciate all of the information and your time on, on Mr. Appliance and Neighborly. But I guess, is there anything maybe that we've missed about Mr. Appliance or, or Neighborly that you really want to make sure that we know before we let you go today? I think that the, the few things that I would add to what we've talked about today is that we are the last national appliance repair company out there. You know, our biggest competitor used to be, I'll say it, Sears. Uh, you know, they've <laughs> kind of changed their model. Uh, you know, our, our our biggest competitor now is a new appliance. You know, it's a choice that a customer makes. You know, right. do I want to buy something new or do I want to repair it? And, you know, the, a lot of, for a lot of people, the kitchen is the centerpiece of their home. They want to gut out their kitchen to put in a new refrigerator or a new stove and, you know, things like that. And I think it's just it, it's a very underrated industry. It's not getting replaced by AI, by Walmart, by Amazon. You know, again, that word unique. We kind of have our right. own niche and we've grown it into national and, and also into Canada. I mean, we have great opportunity in Canada. So, you know, it's I, I've learned to love it. I, I love my team. I love my owners. And it's a great family to be a part of with Mr. Appliance and Neighborly. Yeah, absolutely. No, I, I I love it. It's just, it's one of those, again, the repair is always great because it is needed. It's not going away. This adds the lack of, lack of, you know, urgency in middle of the night phone calls with this. Um, and, and again, there's like people sometimes worry about competition. There's, there's not right. Um, of, of this, right. Not, and again, not actual competition. We don't count Billy Bob and the beat up pickup truck, right? For for this. So um and the cost of appliances, like that's not going down either. So right. You want to replace it with something new. Um, that shiny new object is no joke. Right. And so again, or I can come in and, and I can get it fixed and, and have it back like new for a fraction of the costs. So Cool, man. Bobby, you, you're you awesome. Thank you so much for coming on today and, and uh, sharing a little bit about Mr. Appliance. I appreciate it, Tim. It's been my pleasure. I love talking about the brand and hopefully this will reach some great people and love to get a chance to speak with them also. Absolutely. Thanks so much for your time. Thanks, Tim. Thanks again to Bobby from Mr. Appliance for joining us today. And as always, thanks to our loyal podcast listeners for tuning in. 
hopefully this continues to add um, some interest and really some insight into the amazing possibilities that can be achieved with franchise ownership. Um, I also have an exciting announcement to share with everybody. I've uh, been sitting on this one for a while. I wanted to wait until we got a little bit closer to the launch. But on August 30th, the Fran Coach team is launching a first of its kind, a TV show about franchising. That's right, folks. We're taking this show on to TV. Uh, the new show is called The Franchising 360 Show. And Franchising 360 is going to take a holistic view of the world of franchising, thus the 360. See what we did there? Uh, we are, of course, going to talk about becoming a franchise owner, but we're also going to talk more about what a life is like as a franchise owner and even what it's like to become a franchisor. Don't worry, the Franchising 101 podcast is not going away and we will still come to you with new episodes every Thursday. The Franchising 360 show will air on Biz TV, which is a channel with exclusive content for future and current business owners. You can download the Biz TV app as well as it's syndicated on over 100 stations around the United States. Plus, you can go old school and just watch it online at biztv.com. The Franchising 360 show will air every Friday night, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. The first episode is coming August 30th. That's right. Two weeks. So be ready. Plan your watch party right now. It promises to be epic. We hope. Anyway, uh, excited for that. We hope we'll have everybody tune on there. Uh, for now, for the Franchising 101 podcast, uh, franchising101podcast.net, francoach.net. When you're ready to take that next step to see if franchise ownership might be for you, please reach out. As always, there's never any fee for our service. Let us help you create your better tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. We'll talk with you next week.